we're starting this year off with a short Kickstarter series in the book of Colossians. Uh, this uh, section I called Christ We Proclaim, focusing in on verse 28 as the hinge around which this section works. As always, I really do encourage you to take some time, read through this passage a few times, look for some key repetition, try to get a handle of what Paul is saying in this section. Take some time to pray and ask God to open your eyes to grow your view of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. So as I said, I called the talk I did from this section, Christ We Proclaim. And something Paul does in this book to the Colossians is he gives us a really big view of Jesus. The previous section has showed us uh, the supremacy of Christ, uh, how he is fully God and how Jesus came to reconcile us to God by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. And in this section, uh, Paul is, is showing how he wants this Jesus, who he knows, who he loves, he wants this Jesus proclaimed to the world around him. So I see this phrase in verse 28 as the hinge around which this passage uh, works. Um, everything Paul is saying here works around this idea of uh, Christ is the one we proclaim. And linked in with this, he says, uh, to present the word of God in its fullness. So Christ, we proclaim from the word of God in its fullness. And the purpose of proclaiming Christ from all of God's word is to present everyone fully mature in Christ. And Paul says it's to this end, the end of presenting everyone fully mature in Christ, that he strenuously contends with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in him. So this little section is topped and tailed with the idea of suffering and strenuously contending. So Paul is making it clear that this work of proclaiming Christ is not easy work. But as he starts this section, he says, now I rejoice. He rejoices in the privilege that he has to proclaim Christ. And as we get this big view of Jesus in the whole of this book of Colossians, we see this section puts the spotlight on Jesus a number of times. This idea of being in Christ or Christ in you. He speaks of the church as his body, Christ's body. Just some other repetition we see, he speaks of this commission that God gave him. He speaks of uh, presenting the word of God in its fullness. Um, God has chosen to make known this mystery. So we see this repetition of mystery. But it's a revealed mystery. Because this mystery was kept hidden for ages, but it's now disclosed. It's been made known. So you see here, he says it's disclosed to make known the mystery, to proclaim the mystery, to present, in order to present everyone fully mature in Christ. And he does that by presenting the word of God in its fullness. So there's a whole lot about proclamation, presenting, disclosing, making known. And what he wants to make known is the truth about Jesus. He wants everyone to have a big view of Jesus so that they would be fully mature in Jesus, so that they would rejoice in the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you. The hope of glory, he calls it. Paul had this absolutely sure and certain hope that one day he would see this Christ who he proclaimed, this Christ who had saved him, uh, this Christ who he had an increasingly big view of. He was longing for the day when he would see him and be with him forever, rejoicing in Jesus. And so he proclaims Christ because he wants other people to be ready for eternity. So we see Paul's other person-centeredness. I rejoice in what I'm suffering for you, to present to you, to the Lord's people, so that he might teach everyone and present everyone fully mature in Christ. Paul loved these Colossians, even though he had never met them personally. But he loved them because he knew that Jesus had saved them. These were brothers and sisters in Christ. 
and he wanted to spend his energy in presenting them fully mature in Christ. To present everyone fully mature. Uh, another translation says to present everyone perfect. Perfect in Christ. And so in order to do that, Paul says Christ is the one we proclaim. He is the one we proclaim. He is willing to suffer in this proclamation about Jesus, but he rejoices in that suffering. And the way that he proclaims Jesus is through the word of God in its fullness, through all of God's word. The whole Bible is about Jesus and God's plan to save a people for himself through Jesus. And so that is the word that um, Paul proclaims all about Jesus so that people might be fully mature in Jesus and he's strenuously contending in this work that he's been called to do. There is an interesting phrase here, which he, Paul says, uh, he speaks about what is still lacking in regard to Christ's affliction. Uh, there's a lot that's been written about this, many different views of what this might mean. But I think in the context of presenting the word of God in its fullness and proclaiming Christ, uh, we know for sure that from the whole of Colossians and the whole of the New Testament, that Christ's work to save us uh, is absolutely not lacking. That work is complete. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, his work to save a people for himself was complete. So that's not what's lacking. So what then could be lacking? It's not the work of propitiation. It's the work of proclamation. Proclamation or presentation of the gospel. And so when Paul says, I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking, he's talking about this work of presenting the word of God in its fullness, from taking all of scripture and showing how this whole big story is all about how God has made a plan through Jesus to reconcile the people to himself. And he says here that he calls it glorious riches, the glorious riches of this mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is what he presents and proclaims. And he's speaking to the church, to God's people. He wants to see God's people fully mature. How do we see God's people mature? Well, we proclaim Christ. We don't proclaim Christ in order only to save people. Once people are saved, we continue to proclaim Christ. So that these glorious riches, which we will never fully plumb, uh, can be dug into deeper. That we can grow to know Jesus more and more. And that our view of Jesus can become bigger and bigger so that we will be maturing in Christ. Now the fact that the word of God in its fullness is all about Jesus. In the Old Testament that was still mysterious. They hadn't uh, seen this uh, being fulfilled in Christ. So it was kept hidden for ages and generations, but it's now disclosed because Jesus has come. He said, I am the word. And the word became flesh, uh, John tells us. And so the mystery is out and we get to make known among the Gentiles. So the glorious news in this passage is this isn't only good news for God's people, the Jews. It's good news for everyone, for the Gentiles too, that we are united together because of Jesus the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you. In you, the hope of glory. Christ in you is the ground and foundation and cause of our hope that we will enter into the fullness of God's glory one day. And Paul wanted people to be ready for that. So he says, Christ we proclaim. And he says here that he strenuously contended. To this end, I strenuously contend. And this is a picture of somebody who has, has left it all on the field. They have given their all for this cause. And Paul says that he has given it all, but he says that he's given it all with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Now, the energy for this work of proclaiming Christ down here below the energy for this work comes from above. It comes from Christ. And if we don't rely on the power of God, uh, the same energy that raised Christ from the dead, the same uh, power that 
took sinners who were dead in their sins and made them alive in Christ, if we don't rely on that power, then we aren't going to be able to keep going in this work of proclaiming Christ. Uh, the specific word for energy or power here is, is used only a few times in the New Testament. And Paul uses it to speak of the miraculous power of God that raised Jesus from the dead and the power that took dead people, uh, dead in their sins, and made them alive in Christ. That same power, that miraculous power, is the power that we strenuously contend with. Yes, it's going to be hard work. Yes, it's going to bring us suffering, but we rejoice because we have this opportunity to present the Word of God in its fullness, which is all about Christ, so that we might present everyone fully mature in Christ, and we strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. So at the end of the day, we need to be able to stop and say, I have proclaimed Christ today. At the end of the day, can I stop and say, I have proclaimed Christ today. Now, if our view of Jesus is growing, if our hope of glory with Jesus is growing, as we dig into God's word in all its fullness from Genesis to Revelation, and that grows our view of Jesus, we will want to proclaim him. We will want those who don't know him to come to know him, that we might present everyone fully mature in Christ. But we'll proclaim him too to the Lord's people, to the church, to those who already know him so that they might fully mature in Christ and we will strenuously contend with all his energy. And so this is a great passage for us to be looking at at the beginning of a year for us to ask ourselves, how can I strenuously contend this year with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me so that I can proclaim Christ from God's word in its fullness to present everyone fully mature in Christ? At the end of the day, will I be able to stop and say, I have proclaimed Christ today? We'll want to do that if our view of Jesus is growing. And so my prayer is that as you keep digging into this passage, as you look at Colossians as a whole, as you dig into God's word in its fullness this year, that your view of Jesus will grow and you will want to proclaim Christ to everyone, to present everyone fully mature in Christ. May God strengthen us for this. As you talk about this more, may you encourage each other to be about this glorious work. It's hard work. It's work that will bring us suffering, but it's work to rejoice in because we are doing the work of presenting the word of God in its fullness, all about Jesus. And that word is what will mature those around us. It will mature us. So God bless as you dig in further.